Just wanted to touch base one more time. This will be our last video for the John Muir Trail adventure. I know it was cut short, but I wanted everybody to know I made it back home. I've been home about a week. I don't know if you can tell by my voice, but I've come down with a cold. Um, I did want to put some thoughts together. Terry and I sat down after we made our final decision to leave the trail and we put together some thoughts, some reflections, the things that went well, the things that we could improve upon. And then we changed our plans. We had to make our flight changes. And one of my husband's good friends that lives in LA agreed to come down and pick us up. Our good friend, Tom Irich, came through to rescue two stranded ladies in the middle of Independence, California. Three and a half hours, four hours he drove just to get us and four hours back. I had no choice. Steelton called. When Steelton calls, you have to apply yourself. We were very fortunate again to, to have Tom and for him to be able to come and get us. So thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes, thank you. Tom Marvich, thank you very much. It was above and beyond what anyone could ask for. That was Hopefully I can get through this without a lot of emotion. I was very emotional the last couple of days. <laughs> it's very hard. The hardest part is being able to say, that's it. It was a, it is a smart move. Our next section is to VVR, which is a seven day carry. We would have had to have tried to maybe shorten the miles to get there, but yeah, I don't think I could get back up over Kearsarge Pass. The way I was breathing and the way it just, the effort that it took to take one step in front of the other. So we called it quits. I just want to thank Terry. Terry has been the best friend. When I wasn't feeling well, she stepped up. She is very caring, thoughtful, flexible, understanding, really. I couldn't have asked for a better hiking partner. So thank you, Terry. Um, Terry and I are sitting outside the Mount Williamson Motel. You're going to hear a lot of background noise as far as the highway goes, but uh, kudos to this place. What do you think? I think it's one of the nicest motels we've ever stayed in on a hike. Clean, welcoming, cozy, many nice amenities. Can't say enough positive things about this place. We heard a comment on trail that basically said this was a hiker hotel. And when you think of a hiker hotel, it's not from an AT perspective, is not the best connotation of a, a place to stay. But when you got here, it was like, wow, they got really nice showers. You know, nice, the, nice bathroom, nice beds, comfortable mattresses, nice bedding. Yeah. Um, they have breakfast. Yeah, breakfast, you know, outside breakfast at nice, seven. Uh, there's yeah. outside. This is the, the earliest we could really sit outside. It was so hot today. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the positives because it definitely was not a negative coming out here. So Terry, what do you think some of the positives were? It was a, a huge project planning for this trip. Betty put a lot of time into planning the, what our uh, mileage each day would look like, where we would stop to resupply, put time into our food, uh, thinking about what we were going to eat, yeah. doing practice hikes, making sure we were fit and ready for the trail. We both took Diamox to help with altitude acclimation and actually went so far as looking at into how to transport your backpack on a plane because you can't just check a backpack that's not packed properly and expect it to make it to the destination um, undamaged. The positive is that we did a lot of preparation and I think we did the right kind of preparation. In some of my earlier videos, I mentioned my biggest fear was altitude and Terry's was my feet I was concerned about blisters and foot pain yeah so Terry did not have any issues right? I did not have one blister we did get new 
boots since our last hike in uh, April. They fit perfectly. And I also found something called hiker goo that I put on my feet every morning. And I think that really helped also prevent any blisters. So I had about 50 um, band-aids, gel packs, um, K-tape, um, and didn't need any of it happily. <laughs> and didn't have any major foot pain. And your other fear was actually being able to hike more than four days straight, straight. with a backpack. Yeah. And we did. Yes. We made it, so, so she did good. So she, her fears were overcome. My fear, as you know, was not quite there. But in reality, we did everything right. We did everything we, that we thought we could. Yeah. So if you are trying to acclimate, I think our plan was a great plan. Get there early, acclimate at a high elevation. We did Mammoth Lakes, which was great. We did a nice day hike up Duck Pass. And then we stayed at the campground, Horseshoe Meadows. And we only did a short four and a half miles going into Chicken Springs that first time. My body just didn't quite acclimate. Terry was the go-getter. She did great. So do your preparation on that acclimation because it can be a showstopper. So the other positive that we got out of this trip is we are pretty resourceful women. <laughs> For this, I think having a Garmin is very key. To have some sort of satellite communication, I would highly recommend it. I have a plan that you can do unlimited text, which was nice because it's not just for emergencies, but contact with family. Especially uh, when we were out here for seven days, it was nice to be able to let our family know we were doing okay or not doing okay. So. Right. And I was able to get word on an emergency at home um, so that I wouldn't have known because there is no cell service, there is no Wi-Fi, you're, you're out in the middle of nowhere. When it came to my body not being able to respond properly to the high altitudes, we made the decision to get a hold of a fuel pack company. Yeah, it's the same company, yeah. Burner Pack Station or the yeah. Sequoia Kings Pack uh, trains. And I can't say enough good things about them. The very night before we needed them, the very night, like 6.30 at night. Danica. Danica. She responded um, and we were able to get something set up pretty quick. We actually got the idea about the uh, mules from um, other campers who had um, looked into it for their own trip. But they decided not to go with it, but they told us about it. Um, they gave us the name of the company. Um, we used the Garmin to contact my daughter, who got the phone number, and then we were able to text Danica, and um, she was extremely responsive and, and got us the resources we needed to, to exit the trail. So we were able to make the connection. They confirmed that they could come get us. We agreed on the price and and we had a way out. And I really, as we were coming up over Kearsarge Pass, I knew at that point that I would have had one heck of a day. And so I made the right decision. We had our movie star packer guide come get us. It was like in the movies. I felt like we were in a Western movie being led by our uh, leader yeah. and uh, mules out of the, the wilderness. Seeing a, this man coming up on his horse and he had like a pack horse behind him and then two saddled horses and we're like, oh, that's ours. <laughs> Thank goodness. And they were so great, thoughtful. They brought coffee, they brought fresh Sandwiches oranges, and apples and water and so it was a great experience and I would highly recommend them. A big shout out to Saul McLeod who helped us down up and down over that mountain pass and made us feel very comfortable and with Dawn that uh, helped us get a shuttle down from the Onion Valley uh, trailhead down into town. So they were a great company. I would look them up if you ever need anything. So do we supply so they can meet you on the trail with your resupply um, so you don't actually even have to get off trail. That's something we would change if we were to do it again. It's worth it. That extra 16 miles basically is... Uh, with a big pass <laughs> in that 16 miles because you have to go over it twice. 
Yeah. Yeah. So consider it. And if you know other people that are on trail that are doing it, you might be able to save some costs. So another um, positive about this trip is really the people that you encounter. And um, with me not feeling so well, my social skills were a little off. And so Terry did most of the interactions. Well, we met nice people at a couple of our campsites. Um, specifically, uh, one night there was two gentlemen that were part of a organization called the Mankind Project. They invited all the other campers to um, have dinner with them. So I did, and then as well as um, a couple from uh, Russia that live in the U.S. now, but were originally from Russia, joined us. Very interesting conversation. Um, they were the ones that, that gave us the idea about the um, pack mules. People from Russia were very nice and, and very interesting to talk to. So. I think that's one of the best things about hiking is just encountering all the different people that uh, from all places in the world. One of our first encounters with someone that uh, was very friendly and kind was our shuttle driver, Lone Pine Curry. He picked us up in Bishop and took us to the campground where we started the trip. Um, we had been in communication with him before the trip. Um, he was the one that recommended we stay overnight um, before we start to help uh, start the acclimation process. So we took his advice and started that. Very uh, welcoming and also had a lot of history in the area. And it turns out his wife is an artist. Yeah. And uh, we got to see some of her greeting cards and actually purchase them and hand them to us. He was very responsive and also, you know, offered that if we had um, any major problems during our hike, he was there to help us. So it was nice to feel that we had that backup um, if necessary. You called him today? Yes, I called him today because staying in Independence, I took a, a bus out to Bishop um, just for something to do and assuming that I could get an Uber back here. Well, it turns out there are no Ubers out here. So I texted Kurt and uh, he recommended somebody who gave me a ride back here. So that. <laughs> that was better than waiting for the next bus ride back. Three hours later. Yeah. All right, with all the positives, there are some things that we probably would change. So what are some of those? Number one, from a food perspective, um, I've done a fair amount of backpacking before and I know what I normally eat, but I, again, focused on what I read as far as how many calories you should consume and pack accordingly. And that was much more than I could eat. So. Again, um, knowing what your body um, needs and sticking to that, because then when you have extra food, you have extra weight, which which weighs you down and makes your, your hiking more difficult. For me, I'm not bringing tuna again, and I don't think I'll bring mashed potatoes. I could probably stomach some ramen. Uh, peanut butter is going to be my source, and if I can get some sort of bread, not tortillas, but take the food that you really, really like so that you'll eat it. I think that's key. Doesn't doesn't matter what everybody else says. You got to be able to eat it. Bring what you'll know you'll eat. It's a definite change. The other thing I would change is our. So we have heavy packs, right? I honestly don't know how much mine exactly weighed, but my guess is somewhere between 35 and 38 pounds. It's a balance. It's a balance. So balance I enough. yeah, I brought some things that I shouldn't have. I had some things in there that I never really touched. I thought I was going to put lotion on my feet. I didn't put lotion on my feet. I bought extra tube of suntan lotion, which I didn't need, extra uh, chapstick. And I actually had a pair of shorts, and I probably could have done without the shirt that I had been wearing, because, uh, uh, or at least one of the long sleeve shirts that I brought. Although they're very light, it still adds up. Adds up yeah. So if you're ever saying, just in case, Think about it again. You're only seven days away only. It's a long time, but seven days away from getting to where you get something else, so. But in some cases, you might wanna think about other scenarios and that um, I would say, I wish I had brought more hand sanitizer. Forgot. I'd get more and um, just with everything else got distracted. So, yeah. um, you know, in some instances you have to think about, well, can I live without this? But then in some things you make say, sure well, you make sure you have enough things that are really vital. Yeah, I don't think I mentioned this on any of the videos. We both bought the day for the toilet and really have to practice using that. If you haven't practiced it much, you may need more toilet paper than what you originally brought. So, Terry and I were just uh, 
arguing a little debating, off debating. and debating, arguing, mm -hmm. debating off camera. Um, one of the things, you know, when you look at your plan, uh, we had scheduled probably 13 miles after a zero coming out of here to get back over over Kearsarge with the idea that you could cut it short because I showed a camp spot we could stop at ahead of time. But then you have to make it up. So it's a trade-off because if you cut your miles short and then you take extra days, at some point you either have to make up the days or you're not going to make it. And that's a possibility. You could always change your plan to get out maybe at Red Meadows or Tuolumne Meadows or something. Well, and one thing you mentioned when we were talking earlier was doing it in sections. Yeah. So we never really thought about doing the John Muir Trail in sections instead of doing it all this year. Maybe we could have thought, well, we'll do half this year and half next year. So we never really, they never really talked about that and what we read about, but I think it's something to think about is yeah. depending on your time constraints, um, you know, it is an, an option to your section height, the right. time you trail. Right. And so really the key to all this is, you know, you have a plan, but sometimes you have to be flexible, whether it's making a hard decision to get off trail or changing your miles um, or cutting it shorter than you expected. Yep. So those are all the things that come into play. All right, surprise question. Oh no. No, I just want to know, was it worth it? Oh, totally. I, I, uh, I, I said, would I have, want to do it again? I have no regrets. We got to see some beautiful scenery, met great people. We summited Mount Whitney. We had adventurous rescue and um, I think that was a once in a lifetime opportunity so no regrets. No regrets. Alright Terry, we're going to end this video on a celebratory note. Although our goals weren't totally met, we did some amazing things out here and we have no regrets. Cheers. Cheers. To another adventure. <laughs> another adventure. Next video will probably be related to the Adirondacks Terry and I are planning on heading up there mid uh, to late September. So maybe we'll get some fall colors. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. We do have more adventures coming. Who knows how they're gonna end up, but besides the Adirondack trip that Terry and I have got planned, Vito and I are going back to California for Joshua Tree and Death Valley National Parks. So that's on top of a wedding that we're going to and next year, there's already plans in the works for a Poland trip. Vito is going to trace some of his roots in Poland. And we'll also do some touristy things. So that one's still in the planning phase, but that'll probably be in end of March, early April. So who knows what else we're going to come up with. Things are twirling in my head. More adventures to come.